Hey, I want a cab tractor as bad as you do. But before you lay your money down, stop and listen to my six reasons why not to buy a cab tractor. Stay tuned. Hi, this is Paul from CountryCraziness.com. If you're interested in tractors, post frame construction, and homesteading, well, you've come to a good place. Why not subscribe, tap the bell, and join in on the conversation? You know, when I picture myself in a cab tractor, I see myself out in the field pulling my implement with the air conditioner on, the radio cranked up loud, no pollen in my nose or bees on my butt. It's a glorious thing. I think of myself in the cold winter nights with the cab heater on, blowing snow off the driveways. But just like everything else, there's advantages and disadvantages to different things. And let's take a look at what the disadvantages are of this environmental capsule we know as a cab. First, let's talk about costs. And I'm not talking about how much money you spend. You got a spouse for that. I'm talking about spending the same amount of money but just how you're gonna spend that money. So instead of putting down the 25% premium to get a cab on top of a regular tractor, why not take that money and buy other stuff like implements or maybe even a bigger tractor with more horsepower. On the one hand, you've got something that you're spending money on that'll help you get more work done. And on the other hand, you're spending money on something that will make you more comfortable while you're doing the work. Next is weight. I'm one of the biggest proponents of a heavy tractor, but when it comes to adding a cab onto a tractor, I may back off on that opinion a little bit because the height raises the center of gravity. So if you live in a slopey area, that may make things just a little bit more precarious. And speaking of height, I was kind of surprised when I did my research for the video that in some series of tractors, the cab versions are actually shorter than the ones that are the platform tractors. However, that dimension is with the rollover protection system in the up position. Once it's down, that advantage is gone and you can get that tractor that doesn't have the cab into much tighter spaces and it may help you get into a garage opening that you wouldn't be able to get into with a cab tractor. Next is maneuverability. I have a lot of woods that I work in on my property, so I rely on being able to get my tractor into some very tight areas of the woods so I can do the kind of logging that I want to be able to do. And I wouldn't be able to do that nearly as effectively with a cab tractor. I had a nightmare one night that I finally got the cab tractor in there, and when I did, I couldn't get the door open. I digress. Next, let's look at horsepower. If you're looking to buy a smaller tractor, that could be significant. In the fact that the one tractor that I looked at uh, without the cab, the PTO horsepower is 21 and a half horsepower. And with the cab, it's 18.6 PTO horsepower. Obviously you lose horsepower with the air conditioning system in place. And then let's talk about maintenance. Anytime you add anything more onto a piece of equipment, it's one more thing that can go wrong. But at the very least, you're going to have to do some routine maintenance to cab filters and especially to keep the glass clean on the inside so you don't get all fogged up and dirtied up and can't see out the windows very good just like you do in your car if you neglect that for too long a period of time. So if you listen to the whole list and you feel like you're in good shape then buy that cab, crank up the air and have fun. If you have second thoughts then maybe a cab tractor should be your second one and who could argue with that. Hey, if you dig videos on Kubota and John Deere, then check out this video right here. And if you'd like to just binge watch on some tractor videos, then check out this playlist up above.